what if the very things that you thought might be helping your sleep were actually hurting you? Here are three surprising things that you might be doing that are actually worsening your insomnia. The first one is going to bed early. Now, going to bed early might seem like such a natural solution to those who suffer with insomnia. When each night seems to be filled with difficulties either getting to sleep or waking in the middle of the night or in the early morning, many people get concerned that their bodies are just not getting enough sleep. And that's a completely reasonable concern, particularly if you've read studies that talk about health problems associated with sleep deprivation. So it would seemingly make sense that you need to get into bed nice and early to give your body the best chance of sleep. But although, yes, sleep deprivation can sort of be a coexisting issue with insomnia, it's not really the driving problem in insomnia. Instead, by getting into bed earlier than you should, your body is often not ready for sleep. And so all that happens is that you end up being awake in bed, just sort of lying there, or you start doing some other activity whilst lying in bed to pass the time. This might be reading or watching something on your laptop. And the problem with this is it breaks one of the cardinal rules for those with insomnia, which is that your bedroom should really just be used for sleep. If you're constantly awake in bed, then what can end up happening is that your brain starts forming this sort of abnormal connection between being in bed and being awake, which is not what you want. Number two is daytime napping. Now, daytime napping can be such a great thing for a lot of people, but when you have insomnia, it can interfere with your body's natural regulating system. Our body has a system that it uses naturally to fall asleep each night, and we call it sleep pressure. In reality, it's made up of a bunch of biochemical signals in the brain, but your sleep pressure is a bit like blowing up a balloon. It increases throughout the day, and specifically it increases when you're awake, when you're out of bed, and when you're active. And so for most people, at the end of a busy and productive day, in the late evening typically, the pressure for sleep is just too great for your body to stay awake, and that's when people drift off to sleep naturally. And as you do that, sleep pressure gets released and that balloon shrinks down, and the next morning the process starts again. For those with insomnia, the problem is that naps sabotage that natural buildup of sleep pressure. They release pressure during the day when it should still be building, and instead of you reaching the end of the day with a full and tight balloon, you have one which is a bit weak and feeble. And it just means that you're less likely to fall asleep at nighttime when you're meant to. Finally, sleeping in on weekends. Now, sleeping in on weekends might be something you've done your entire life, with or without insomnia. It's sort of a cultural norm, just like your free pass after a long week of work and general busyness in life and it's the relief we often desperately feel we need after a long week of regimented waking up each morning. Here's the thing though, if you have insomnia, sleeping in on weekends can actually make your insomnia worse in three main ways. The first is actually very similar to the first point we made when talking about the mistake of going to bed early, because for a lot of people with insomnia, sleeping in on the weekend really just means waking up, feeling like you haven't had a great night's sleep, then not being able to go back to sleep, and then just lying in bed awake in the morning hours, just hoping that you might get a few extra hours of sleep. But the same problem occurs. You're lying in bed awake, and this runs the risk of your brain making this harmful link once again of feeling like the bed is a place to stay awake. The second problem is that when you sleep in on a weekend, you're not allowing your internal body clock, sometimes called your circadian rhythm, to receive a consistent cue for the start of the day. This provides a mixed signal to your body for when it should be awake and alert. But if you wake up consistently on the weekends at a set time as close as possible to your weekday waking, you're much more likely to be sending your body and your brain a clear signaling cue for daytime. And this is super important when it comes to telling your body that it's time to sleep when nighttime rolls around. And the third point for why sleeping in on the weekend is so harmful for insomnia is that it comes back to sleep pressure. Because if you're lying in on a weekend, you're not getting out of bed and you're not blowing up that balloon, creating the biggest and baddest balloon in the whole wide world. And so, although going to bed early and daytime napping and sleeping in on weekends are all things that you might have done to try and manage your insomnia, they're all things that can actually disrupt your sleep further. This is really the tip of the iceberg because there are so many more behaviors and things that people do that actually worsen insomnia. And so it's my mission here on this channel to help you understand more about what these saboteurs of sleep are, and more importantly, 
how you can tackle them and how you can get the best night's sleep possible. Because a better night is a better day. And with that, I'll see you in the next video, which should be somewhere here. Bye-bye.